Hello, today I'm going to introduce sedimentary rocks and how to identify them. First, stages of creating a sedimentary rock. Rocks were first weathered or eroded into sediments. Sediments were transported, then deposited. Finally, they are lithified into sedimentary rocks. With this process going on, the water velocity changes from high to medium to low, which is decreasing, and uh, the grain size deposited changes from large, which is pebbles, coarse, to medium, which is thin, and to small, so the grain size is decreasing and the degree of rounding is increasing. The particles changes from angular to subangular to rounded. First, weathering and erosion. There are two types of weathering. First is mechanical or physical, and second is chemical. Physical weathering breaks down the rocks into smaller fragments of rock. It is dominant in arid area with large changes in temperature. Chemical weathering breaks down the internal structure of the minerals in the rock. The minerals are dismantled iron by iron. Water is the most important chemical weathering agent and transports the ions and molecules removed from the minerals. It is dominant in humid area with high temperatures such as Alabama, then transported by water or wind. Deposition. When water velocity decreases, sediment deposited at the bottom. Chemicals in solutions are precipitated into new minerals deposited at the bottom. Stano's law of original horizontality. Sediment is deposited horizontally in parallel layers called strata or bedding. The principle of superposition, the oldest sedimentary layer is on bottom and the youngest is on top. Lithification, turning soft sediments into solid rock. Four types of sedimentary rocks. First, clastic, made from sediment that formed through mechanical weathering of rocks and are transported as solid materials. Clastic rocks include shale, sandstone, conglomerate, and breccia. Determination of the rock name is based on the grain size using grain size card. Individual grains are apparent. Example, Green size from big to small, brazier, conglomerate, sandstone, and shale. Shale has the smallest grains. With green size increasing, we have sandstone, Then conglomerate. Then brazia. Second chemical. Composed mainly of crystals or grains that precipitate out of water. Chemical rocks include evaporates, which are rock salt and rock gypsum, dollar stone, travertine, and chert. Individual grains are not visible. Interlocking crystals grow together during precipitation. Examples are chert, rock salt, rock gypsum. So this is an example of chert.
It is very fine grained. Example of rock gypsum. Example of rock salt. Third, biochemical contain a large amount of biological materials such as fossils or limestone. Limestone composed many of skeletal fragments of marine organisms. Biochemical rocks include conchina, chalk, and limestone. Examples are two kinds of limestone, conchina and chalk. This is a sample of microcrystalline limestone. It is fine grained, microcrystalline. Sample of conquina. Visible shell fragments loosely cemented. Sample of phosphorus limestone, visible shell and shell fragments. Sample of chalk, composed of microscopic marine shells. Fourth, organic, forms from organic debris and organic-rich sediment. Include peat, various types of coal. Example, coal. Sample of coal. It is fine grained organic matter, dark brown to black. Third, rounding and sorting. Provide information about transport, rounding. Sediments traveled long distance have smoother faces and more rounded. With the travel distance increasing, the particles can be described as angular, subangular, subrounded, and well-rounded. See figures below. Example: Bricia is angular, and conglomerate and sandstone are rounded. See the angular particles in Bricia. See the rounded particles in conglomerate and sandstone. Sorting the degree of uniformity of particle size. Where sorted means particles very similar in size, and poorly sorted means a range of particle sizes. Sediments travel long distance will be well sorted, and short distance lead to poorly sorted. Example. Conglomerate and brazier are poorly sorted, and sandstone and shale are well sorted. Notice the large and small particles in conglomerate sample and the brazier sample, and the even sized particles in the sandstone and shale. Environments of deposition First, evaporate. An area that has once been filled with water, and the water evaporates, leaving behind a salt in mineral form, such as halite gypsum, for example, rock salt and rock gypsum. Sample of rock salt. Sample of rock gypsum. Second, terrestrial deposition in land. 
A key feature would be water flowing causes cross bedding. For example, coal and conglomerate, brazier, sandstone, and shale could be terrestrial. Example of coal Shallow marine Large or whole pieces fossils, such as clamshells, corals. Deep marine No whole pieces of fossils. Deep marine limestone might not contain any fossils. Example, chalk, composed of microscopic marine shells. Conquina is deposited in marine. Chalk is deposited in deep marine. Sedimentary structures and paleocurrents. Sediment deposited in layers called beds, then compose strata. Lamination, two types, first parallel lamination, and second cross bedding. A paleocurrent is a preserved sedimentary structure that tells the observer which way a stream or river was flowing. The errors in the figure shows the direction of the flow. Classification of sedimentary rocks. This table shows the common sedimentary rocks and their classification their description, which can be used to identify sedimentary rocks. They are grouped into four main categories. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps. Feel free to leave any comments or questions. And finally, let's take a look at some samples.